How you going guys? I've got a new camera, it's the S21 Ultra, Samsung. Simon's just turned up and you can see I've got some guests in my house truck. I'm going to get them to introduce themselves to you. Simon and you were sir? Chris Nicol, yeah. From where? Tory Mouth. Where's that? <laughs> Coastal Otago, 30k below Dunedin. Oh, some good country down there. Good okay, country. and are you, is that your dad? Yeah. So what's your name? Anska. Is that a German name? Yeah. Cool. Were you born in Germany or here? Uh, no, I was born in Dunedin. Dunedin? Yeah. Awesome. And can you speak German as well? Uh, yeah, I can fluently, yeah. I can switch between both languages. Ich auch, wer kann Deutsch sprechen zusammen, ja? Yeah. Wie alt bist du in Deutsch? Uh, zehn. Zehn. Auf Englisch? Uh, ten. Ten. Einfach. <laughs> okay, und du? Uh, uh, yeah, my name's Tiak, and I'm seven. You got a cool name. And can you speak German too? Yeah, fluently. So, wie alt bist du auf Deutsch? Sieben. Sieben. Cool. And is this your mum behind you? Yep. Hi. <laughs> and your name is? I'm Antje. Antje. A rare name in Germany. I think I heard it once in the 30 yeah, years I was there. I've only met one person that's called Antje. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And you're from close to Frankfurt? Yeah, that's right. So I used to work a lot around Frankfurt. I worked in Wiesbaden and mm. Mainz. It was mm. really a special time in my life. Yeah. Hey, and you guys came to see me, and I really appreciate you coming. And you also have written me a song about Bush Lawyer, which at some stage I'm probably going to make into a song because it's quite funny. <laughs> anyway, we're going to have a coffee. These guys live off-grid, and they live in an earthship. Can I ask you about what an earthship is? Do you think you can tell us? Uh, yeah, it's a, a house with rammed earth tyres and, like, and like bottle walls and stuff, like all, like, Recycle rubbish. Right. Recycle rubbish. I like the sound of that. Yeah. Can you tell me honestly, don't say something to please mum and dad and everybody, tell me honestly how it is for you. Oh, uh, it's cool because, like, it's special. It's not, like, a usual house. Like, there's not, like, there's not one house exactly the same. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's a good honest answer. And that's mm. actually a positive honest answer. Yeah. What's the thing that you do like about it the most? Just that it's unique? Or is there something else? You'd... Uh yeah, it's it's all, yeah, it's unique, but it's also like yeah, that's just the only answer, really. Man, if I was a young boy and I lived in a place, like that, I'd be so stoked. How many other mates live in something like that? You're in a special place. Yeah. And did your mum and dad build this? Ah, uh, yeah, mum and dad, and I was like, how old was I? Two. Right. Around two ish. Yeah. That's. Are you proud of your parents that they can build something like that? Yeah. I would be. Because that's actually unique and it's a lot harder than building a conventional house because you're having to work with multiple angles and materials that aren't straight mm. and make do with what you've got so you're going to have a very creative mind to do something like that. So I'd be proud of your parents too. Yeah. Oh, I'm going to ask your younger brother what it's like living in an airship. Yeah, it, it's cool, but one problem is the, the ground's very dusty. Yeah. It's all the time dusty. Good on you, mate. <laughs> I thought it might be. But I'll tell you what, I bet you it's not as dusty as in my old farmhouse. It's so dusty in there that even the rats don't like it. They've, they've located the place, yeah. <laughs> hey, well, that's a really awesome achievement to do. It really is that you've built that. I think it's incredible, really. And how do you get on with council and all that sort of stuff? Well, <laughs> or did we, we not um, talk about that? We used to live in the Catlins for a long time. and Oh, we, yep. We, um, we thought we'd move a bit closer to, to town, to Dunedin, and bought some land up the road. And, um, well, I approached the council and um, says, what's the chance, if, you know? And they um, they basically um, said, you know, not a shit show in hell. Yeah. So I did it anyway. That's the way to go, um, yeah. About a year and a half later, they caught up with me, put a $270,000 notice to fix on me, and if I kept building, they were going to find me $10,000 a day. So we... Um, we um, got an engineer, we got an architect, we got a building consultant, just random numbers, didn't know them. Um, behind us, really interested in what we're doing, all wanting change in the world. Yep. And we, we took the council to determination, to took them to their governing body, Ministry of Business, Innovation, Employment. Scrapped them hard. Wow. And um, cleaned them up. Really? And now <laughs> we've set the... Um, president for that type of building. Fuck, mate, put it there. Um, awesome. The um, I love that story. And when you become a licensed building practitioner now, all this re resources in the framework starts so making um, mainstream builders look into alternative solutions more and see yeah. how many duckies can you fit on a trailer sort of yeah. thing, you know. 
So, so yeah. that's so cool. And, 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 and Simon's behind you, nodding his head. And, 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 yet, um, yet he's in the building yep, industry. So you're, not, you're supposed to be going, no, fuck it. We need to keep selling more product. Don't let your boss see uh, that, Simon. Because I'm a builder, you sort of understand where you come from with the council. It was, it, I couldn't do it without doing it myself. And yeah, right. They, so they had to retract everything they put on us. And they signed us off with a, with a COA, Certificate wow. of Acceptance. That is a cool story. Mm. That is a cool story, eh? It also, it also demonstrates as a testament to how good your building was when you did it because engineers had come in and okayed it, you know? Yeah. So it's a testament to how well you've built what you've built. Yeah, they thought it was a bunker. He goes, what do you want? I think that's brilliant. Yeah. That is such a cool story. Yeah, awesome. oh, yeah, I'm blown away. Hey, look, I'm talking too much. I was going to make you a drink. I'll make you a cup of tea and a coffee for you. Germans like coffee. So I've had the spin from the boys and a bit from dad, but how about from mum? Tell us your spin on, on living in their houses. Living in their houses. So there are several things I want to add. So firstly, mm -hmm. we could have never done this without the help of amazing people. So I think the main thing really when it comes to you know all the beautiful things and the natural living and that is just that we're never on our own. There's always other people chipping in and whether it's somebody just traveling through, coming in for the weekend to help you, you know, lay out some stones or if it's like, you know, all those things are like the amazing architect and building instructors, like all those people that helped us, the people that came to workshops and helped build it. It wasn't just us. It's like a community of people. So right. that's really important yeah. and it's also got the energy of all of those people you know like everybody's hands been in the cob and like mixing things and everyone's yeah. love and intention has been put into it so it just makes it that extra special that is amazing because yeah. when you get a group of people and I, I do a lot of work with taking like four boys at a time I find the dynamics always change you, oh yeah and also when you're doing a, a, a project where you guys had a specific idea of something you wanted to build I have to ask this question, did you have any conflicts? Did you have any things that went against what you planned or was there harmony through the whole no, project? it was just harmonious really. Wow. Because it's like, it's a slow process with earth building, you know, got to really be patient, you know, yeah. like if the weather's crap and the stuff doesn't dry, you can't rush it. It's like a flower. You can't go like, you got to open now. Like, I want to see you. Like, you got to wait until it's ready. It's the same with everything in nature and that's a natural process. So. Um, you just got to wait and the next steps kind of present themselves. You see what makes sense and what doesn't and how it has to be and Right, and you just kind of slowly keep moving along and then because you're living on the side or like you're, you're, you're in harmony with the land You notice where's the prevailing wind coming from? What's doing? What is it doing when it's really wet? Where do we have to put more drainage? Where does it make sense for the garden to be like all those things? They just sort of reveal themselves because mm -hmm. it's not just you know, you're not just getting some property and then there's a building platform and the council says you've got to do it this way and you just like bang, put a pre-made yep. plan on it. You're actually creating it yourself and that makes so much more sense because you can read the land and the environment and everything um, around it. So, yeah. I really like it that you acknowledge all the other people. I think it's important. And one thing that I've learned in life is to always be prepared to be wrong. Sorry about notifications coming through. I should get it turned <laughs> off. Um, I'll always say to people particularly what's going on right now like simon's a classic he knows so much about hunting because he's a hunting guide professional and he's also a builder mm -hmm. and so often he's i mean he's a lot younger than me although he doesn't look it does he <laughs> just joking now i've taken my beard off come on i'm catching yeah. up with you i'm getting younger but i really i like the idea of saying hey look i don't know and i'm prepared to be wrong so when you're doing a project like that you may have had other people come in with other ideas that weren't what you were thinking of that might have been beneficial or was everything ending up exactly how you wanted it oh i think we we didn't have the full picture in the beginning it was just like a general intention we wanted mm. to have a shelter for a family that's beautiful and there's you know nourishing to our soul that's the main thing and then it doesn't really matter so much what exactly it looks like in the end it's just you know like you you just work with what you've got and then we use you know we use so many materials that we just collected over the years we used, when we go on trips we'd collect rocks and then that's what's around our, you know our, our, our oven our, our fireplace or yeah. in the front like a stone hearth it's all memories of trips we did and so we just use things that's and cool yeah it's um that's really cool and i mean yeah for for sure like it's really important like you've got to I don't know, like you don't want to argue with people about who's right, it doesn't really matter. It's always about what's the best solution, so what makes sense, what's going to be lasting, what's going to work. And it doesn't matter if it's my idea or your idea or someone else's. Like, yeah. The question is what's the best solution and then just to, to try to go with that, really, that's the main thing. I think I want to come and see you guys. And yeah, I, you can, I sure. think my subscribers would love to <laughs> have a look into your special home if you let us, because I've got this picture of this place. I'd love to see your gardens too, because, mm. you know, 
COVID-19, I don't want to sound negative, but I don't think we've seen the end of it, to be honest. Oh, no way. I don't think it's quite open. People say, oh, no. in a couple of years we'll forget about it and move on like everything else, but I'm not sure about that, you know. No, I don't think so either. I think it's an ongoing process and it's like a lot deeper than just, you know, the mm -hmm. black that we see. It's, 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 it's a process throughout humanity, you know, making yeah. sure that we realise what's really important to us. Really hey, good to see you guys and oh, thanks for dropping by and I'm going to come and see your home sometime. Yeah, yeah. anytime. Yeah, and also <laughs> thanks that whiskey, mate. You didn't hear. Look at this. I said, don't give me anything and he's still to bring the Glen Fiddick. You know, well, that's for, uh, on behalf of all the southern boys that don't get to see you much. <laughs> thanks, I'd like mate. to have a dram for you. I appreciate it very much. You didn't have to. And on that note, please don't give me whiskey, guys, or anything because I think, like I said to you, if you've got kids, you should spend the money on them, not old clay. Their needs are much more important. But thanks anyway. I appreciate it and I'll take it with gratitude. I'm really excited about going down and seeing you guys when I head down south. Sweet. Yeah. <laughs> See you later. <laughs> See you later. I want to just wrap this video up by saying thanks a lot for the visit, folks. Really good to see you, and I think everybody else would agree it'd be awesome if we do go down south and have a look at your home and how you've done it. Sorry about the little picture in this corner up here. It's called Director's View. It's a new feature on this phone, which I don't know how to use, obviously, yet, but in the future, we might have a better picture using that function. Be good, can't be good, be careful, and we'll see you in the next video. See you later. Right, pace. We're gonna go out for an evening walk. Yes, we are, mate. That's right. Yeah,